All right, I see that they've released the warrant out of Pennsylvania. Uh, all the items taken out of the suspect's vehicle and his parents' home and other locations that he had been at. I wanted to get on here really quick. I'm not going to get in depth with it, but one of the reasons I want to talk about this is I hope people don't get too excited about this and start speculating of what could have been found. Uh, yes, they took seats, they took door panels, they took gas and brake pedals and visors. The reason they took these out of the vehicle wasn't because they had evidence on them. It's they're going to send them back to the lab and hopefully find evidence. That's where the driver was sitting. When it comes to, to blood evidence, it's really hard to get rid of it completely. Uh, anything can be put in, in little tiny spaces and it can be found. If uh, he did leave that residence with anything on him, it could still be in his car, even though he cleaned his vehicle out. So we could, the only speculation we can make is they took these items because they want to test further and possibly find evidence to help build their case. So just look at it that way as this is just more evidence being brought up. They did take a lot of things, like I had said, from the vehicle parts to documentation from the school to... Uh, personal paperwork, books, there's it stated something about some page was underlined on page 118. I'm not too sure what book they had taken on that. Uh, they did the other warrant. They did the receipt on that for the house. They took a Glock 22, which is a 40 caliber um, Glock. They had empty magazines, items like that they had taken from the residence. Uh, a lot of clothing and personal documentation. So there's a lot of things they did take. So... All this is for is for evidentiary um, gathering. All they're going to do is take all this stuff to a lab. They're going to go through it and hopefully find uh, more evidence than they already have. They have quite a bit right now, but hopefully they'll have even more. So that's all I'm really talking about today. Is Because the warrants were released, there's not a lot of information that's gone with it. Just the entire warrant. A lot of those we've already seen. But with, with, this, with this document, there's 34 pages, I believe. And that includes the application for the for the warrant, the purpose, and plus it gives them the scope of the warrant of what they can go look for. Uh, and that's why they seized as much as they could possibly seize. The warrant allowed that. So let's hope. Let's let's take a look and or just keep paying attention to what's going on out there because there's a lot of evidence being collected, a lot of things happening. Uh, before I move on to the safety tip for this week, I hope that if you like this page, please like, subscribe. We can keep this thing going. We can keep giving each other uh, safety tips and tell your stories of how you survive certain things or what you've done to to change your your awareness. So you're you're paying more, you know, closer attention to what things going on around you. I like that. I like this community that we've started, and it's only here to help people. That's all. I, that's all I care about. Is let's just. Make sure everybody's safe. So the safety tip this week is I've started watching a lot of videos coming out lately on less lethal. We're going to be opening a complex, a, a self-defense training complex here pretty soon. And in that complex, I want to have all different types of fighting forms to include firearms. We're going to do force on force training. But one of the things we're going to do is less lethal training. Uh, a lot of people go out and buy bear spray or pepper spray and not really sure how to use it. Uh, or they'll buy a taser and they just have to read the the uh, box and it tells them how to use it. But there's a way of deploying these things that will help and that will work. So I'll talk about that really quick. But when you go out there, please really watch what you're buying. Don't get caught up in the frenzy of kinetic en energy uh, rounds or shotgun beanbag rounds. A lot of these things, like on the SWAT team, we would come out... If we use beanbag rounds on somebody, we would have an arrest team right there. It's a psychological thing. When you hit somebody with a beanbag, they're thinking they actually got shot. It does hurt, and it gives gives them it hesitate makes them hesitate, and it gives the arrest team a chance to be on top of them and take them into custody. You don't have an arrest team. You're by yourself. If you start beanbagging somebody and they're wearing heavy coat, it's gonna feel like they just got punched lightly. I've been hit many, many times with 37 millimeter bean bags. I've also been hit with shotgun bean bags. I've also been hit with uh, with a taser and OC spray. That's oleo resin capsicum. And those two items is what I recommend. If it comes to these gadgets or different things, it, it's not really going to work for you unless you have a lot of people with you. 
The OC spray works really well if you learn how to deploy it. Um, it's one of those you got to watch the wind, where you're hitting the individual. If you hit him in the chest with a streamer, it's not really going to affect him a whole lot. If you spray a fogger directly into the wind, it may hit him a little bit, but it's also going to hit you pretty hard. If you're in a, in a close-in space, if somebody comes into your office or your classroom or whatever it is and you spray it, the entire classroom, hallway, and everything else is going to be affected by it. So remember those things when it happens. It's a psychological thing. You can fight through it and you can win. It, it's an involuntary ice, ice slam. They just shut and it's hard to keep them open. It affects all mucous membranes. The taser, the civilian tasers, uh, yes, it still shoots 50,000 volts just like law enforcement tasers. Volts isn't what, what does the damage. And none of this stuff is non-lethal. It just less than lethal, which means you, don't, you have a less chance of, of taking someone's life by using these items, but you still can. Very rare, but you can. Uh, the taser, like I said, it's 50,000 volts. A lot of civilians, uh, or the civilian models, through taser itself, if you hit somebody with it, it's 50,000 volts, it'll last 30 seconds, you drop on the ground, you run away. You, you get as far as you can possibly get away in, 30, in that time, and they're not really going to want to fight you after that. Law enforcement is five seconds. They keep pulling the trigger every time the individual refuses to comply. I've been tased before. It works, but it's, it's science it's, or it's electronics. I mean, you have to close the circuit. If you shoot somebody with, pro, with probes, one probe hits, one doesn't, the circuit's not closed. If you hit with one probe and the other one doesn't hit and the person keeps coming at you, you hit them with the gun and it's going to close that circuit because there's there's two probes on the end of it or, uh, or two connectors on the end of it that will close the circuit, which will put the shock through the body, but you have to maintain contact with the, with the person. So these are things we're going to be teaching in this classroom. I really want to put a lot of it on video when we do teach the class so you'll get an idea of how things work. Uh, I'm... I'm uh, I'm hoping here within the next month or so we'll have this open. We get some some good video out there, get people a chance to get some good training. Uh, I'm not the guru of all training. I would never claim to be. My training is a way. The only stuff that I teach that is the only way you that there is. There's no other way. Is when I teach the law. Uh, when I teach firearms or anything else, it's a way. It's something you put in your toolbox. If you don't like it and you like your own way, that's okay too. So, like I said, like and subscribe if you like the content of this video. Let's keep it going. Let's uh, tell our stories and let's keep an eye on these warrants. Let's see what evidence they may release. If they do find some evidence on all those uh, car parts and items they found in the house, let's, let's just keep an eye on that and, and stay on top of it and let's see what happens. So I hope everybody stays safe, stay vigilant, and have a great night.